Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to more Borussia Mönchengladbach career mode on FIFA 15. And the first season is fully underway. Our first game of the Bundesliga season, we played against Stuttgart. We had the home advantage, we were playing at home, but we came away with just a point. The match was made difficult after we had a player sent off. They had a player sent off and both teams just cancelled each other out and we came away with a point. But a point is better than none, I suppose. But I wanted to start the season with a bang and come away with all three points. But it just wasn't to be. And, you know, it was the first game of the season, so it's nothing to worry about whatsoever. But the first few games of the brand new season, you want to be getting points under your belt and getting off to a good start. You don't want to be dropping points, which is why I kind of saw our next game, which you guys are watching the highlights of right now against Freiburg as a must win we needed to get three points on the board we can't afford to be falling behind earlier on in the season because there is mighty competition in the Bundesliga as you guys know thankfully we got off to a fly as you saw Thorgan Hazard with the first goal eight minutes gone moments later he almost got his second but the ball just clipping the post and it was eventually defended going out for a corner kick Freiburg weren't backing down they were at home they wanted to impress their home fans but thankfully we had Sommer in between the sticks for this one. He was pulling off some amazing saves, left, right, centre. And numerous times I found myself on the edge of my seat thinking they, they're going to get an equaliser here if I'm not careful. So I need to extend that lead to uh, two goals. It took up to the 76th minute to get our second goal. It would be Thorgan Hazard that would get his second goal of the game. He was on for a hat-trick. Could he get it? You guys are just going to have to stay tuned. But what? What a delivery there from Hahn on the outside of his right boot, just showing off. And it was a great header as well, forcing the ball up into the top corner. A good result and our first set of three points. Then it was on to the transfer deadline day, Sunday, August the 31st of 2014. And I've made the majority of my signings over the last couple of episodes. You saw that I've brought in Santana, Rykovic, and Nigel de Jong. And I thought, well, I've got a bit of money left in the transfer kitty I need to bring in a backup goalkeeper because I've got rid of my other two keepers that weren't up to standards really they were they were getting on a bit as well with age so I put in an offer for Wolfgang Hessel I think that's how you pronounce his name I also went after Angel Rangel from Swansea City he's another right back we need full backs in the team for the majority of the season, I'm going to be going with Corb. Here's my first choice. But Rangel, it's just adding depth to the squad, which we certainly need after I showed you guys the uh, the squad report over the uh, the two previous episodes. And it's, it's all about building those foundations because what I want to accomplish with Munch and Gladbach over the next couple of seasons is make them into this feared side in Europe. I want to make them the team that finally knocked Bayern Munich off their perch in the Bundesliga. And this, this is just the start and I'm so excited to actually really get underway and get into the nitty gritty, get right in the thick of it with Borussia Mönchengladbach. So anyway, as you guys have been watching me putting the deals together for Rangel and also Hessel, I was thinking at the time, I'm not going to be able to pull these two deals off because I don't think I've got enough. So we advanced ahead with uh, transfer deadline day. Rangel declined my contract offer. I was very, very surprised by that because, I mean, at the age of 31, you're not going to have many offers to go to different teams. And he was settled at, at Swansea City. I did manage to capture Wolfgang Hessel. I'm happy about that at the age of 28. It's just a start, remember, guys. Um, and he's going to be a backup keeper as well. Someone that I can maybe play for domestic cup competitions every now and then. Or, and I don't want to speak too loudly. If Sommer was to get an injury, which I don't really see happening. But I just I want to have that, that safety net there just, just in case. I know it's a very small possibility, but you never know what may happen. You know, if I decide to sim a game, Sommer may pick up an injury. So, with Hessel in the bag, he's joined the numerous signings that I've already made so far in the uh, the summer. I just had to focus on bringing in Rangel then. And he eventually accepted my contract offer. I accepted it. I put the deal through. And that means that I've only got 1.1 million in the bank to spend. But we'll see what happens in January. Maybe at the start of next season, I'll do a financial takeover. I... I don't know, it's just a possibility. Let me know what you guys think. Should I do a financial takeover for the second season in the summer? Let me know in the comments below. 
Just going through uh, some of the headlines there. The transfer news, you, could, you just saw that Vidal did actually sign for Manchester City. He, he always seems to go to an English side, whether it be um, Chelsea, Liverpool or Man City in my career mode. You can see Rooney went as well. I covered that in my previous episode. Can't believe that. And Martinez from Bayern Munich has gone to Chelsea for the sum of £27 million. You can see here on the left side of the screen as well the players that I've let go and the players that I've brought in. I've spent a total of 17.6 mil already. Players including Rajkovic, Santana, De Jong, Hessel and Rangel. And look at the top deals as well there. Rooney gone. It's unbelievable. Why Why would Van Gaal let go of him? Especially when you're trying to fight for uh, a Champions League spot. But anyway, that's none of my business. So with the transfer window slamming shut, you can see the amount that was spent... A total of 108.9 million was spent in the summer. Amazing stuff. And I'm just, I'm glad that we managed to sign the players that we've got. And I think we can accomplish something going up to uh, January. Don't forget as well, I, I did forget to mention this actually in my previous uh, two episodes, that with, with the Bundesliga, there is a winter break. So we will not have games in, I think it's January on career mode, whereas... I think in real life it's over December they have a winter break or maybe just in between so that will certainly have its advantages especially if we've got an injured player then that needs to uh, get back to full fitness or maybe that time will will be spent and can be spent looking for new players to improve this team even further oh and as you can see here is the uh, the squad report You'll notice that even though we've played just two competitive games already, some players already on the rise, including Slobodan Rajkovic, you've got Dominguez as well, and Zimmerman. You know, just looking through the list now, we've got such a good squad here. And I just, I, I look forward to the prospect of lifting trophies with this team. And how can I forget Thorgan Hazard has been an absolute gem for us so far this season especially in that that previous game against Freiburg getting those two goals to his name brilliant stuff and I've been thinking shall I bring Malapa back from his loan let me know in the comments section below here is the league table as it currently stands as you know we've only played two games we've won one drew one and we find ourselves in sixth we're in a very good position but our next game was going to be difficult we were at home against Schalke now I'm sure you guys know that Schalke they have a pretty decent team. This is the starting lineup that I went with for uh, Munchen Gladbach. Sommer in goal, of course. Even though I had Wolfgang Hessel, he was starting on the bench. I was going with Rajkovic and Santana, my two new centre halves. Korb and Dominguez at the back. Shaka, Patrick Herman was in there as well. A lineup which I thought was enough to see off the challenge of Schalke, especially in front of the home fans. But with just over 10 minutes gone, Kevin Prince Boateng here, as you can see, just with a bit of skill, dragging the ball back and finds a hole through our back four. Feeds the ball through to Hoga. Even though he was under pressure by my centre-halves, he still hit it first time and still found the back of the net. But not long after that, we found the equaliser coming from Max Kruse. And that ball came from Treore, who was getting his first start of the season for Munchen Glad back down that left side. With that beautiful through ball pass, none of the defenders could have got to it. The goalkeeper did come out to meet him. Very surprised he didn't try and jump on top of it before Kruse could get to it. And that's what cost them that goal. So from Munchen Gladbach's point of view, it was game on. And it certainly was game on heading towards the uh, the end of the first half because they just kept coming out of Schalke. And I think Santana, who was facing his former side for the first time this season, I think him and uh, Rajkovic were really holding themselves up well. And I think we can produce a, a bit of a nice partnership going on at the back there. But those thoughts had to be put on hold for the time being because Rajkovic picked up an injury in this game against Schalke after he went in with that challenge. I had to replace him with Stranzel, more experienced centre-half to come on. It, it was disappointing really because I thought him and Santana, they were having a fantastic first half and it was only his second start to the season for Munchen Gladbach and he goes and gets injured. Very, very disappointing. I thought we were going to maybe sneak a, a goal in, maybe get a sneaky winner against Schalke. We kept trying for it. We kept attacking. Patrick Herman showing just that little bit of optimism which we really needed but it was the final product, the finishing 
which really cost us that game because we had so many decent chances towards the end. We were really taking it to Schalke. It just wasn't to be and we come away with another point. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end it there for this episode. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one.